Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am John Kurtz. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do right now. If you're into college football, specifically conference realignment, multiple videos coming at you every single day right now. And please like the video and comment. I'll be honest, I'll level with you. It helps me. It helps drive those views up. But also, your comment may be used in a future video. And I like the conversation. I want everybody here to be a community and have a conversation on this page. So let me know. Even if you disagree, even if you think I'm stupid, let me know in the comments. You can also certainly tell me I'm awesome. I'd appreciate that too. So today we are talking Big 12, Pac-12, what it was that was discussed between the two commissioners on their six-hour first date last week. Max Olson from The Athletic was the first to have that report that that would be happening. And he's now the guy giving us some sense of detail after the fact as far as what happened. And I would highly encourage you to check out the entire article. It's worth a subscription to The Athletic right now to be following along with all of this. Max Olson does a tremendous job and there's a ton of information beyond just what's going to be talked about in this video in the article. Hashtag not an ad. I'm not getting paid by these guys at all. I just really respect the work and what it is that they do. But so Bob Bowlesby came back with a sense of cautious optimism and assured the meeting went well. That's according to The Athletic in this story. It says the two commissioners did talk concepts of a scheduling alliance, merger, and other potentially creative solutions for working together as expected. So yeah, that lines up with the report going into the meeting. No details, nothing further in detail was offered to the athletic as far as the specifics of what was talked about there. And the meeting from Big 12 sides was phrased as more introductory and exploratory in nature, less about sorting through specific details. Now, as expected, the, the Pac-12 narrative on the meeting is slightly different. It says Pac-12 sources were quick to frame the Bowlesby meeting as a very preliminary get to know you type of visit, which you have to understand. The Pac-12 right now is not in as desperate a position as the Big 12. So the way that they're gonna characterize all of this is different. They don't need a positive image to be out there. The Big 12 would love to be able to say, look, we talked all kinds of specifics. The Pac-12 is very interested. That's how the Big 12 would love to posture this right now, because the Big 12, frankly, is desperate. The Big 12 is the guy at the bar at midnight that's just looking for whatever it is that he can find. Uh, the Big 12 is trying to move on down the line to every girl he sees at the bar and find something. Pac-12, not in that position. Obviously, they're interested enough to listen but don't want that to be out there publicly. Maybe they'll hit you up with some text, but they don't want to be seen publicly chatting at the bar, right? So you're going to get two different kinds of vibes here. And the Pac-12 is in a position where they can't really be turning down many meetings because they, they do need to do something to make sure they keep USC happy. And that's really, if you read into what's happening in the Pac-12 right now, it's just all about keeping USC happy, much like the Big 12 is all about keeping Texas and Oklahoma happy. So what can the Pac-12 do to shore themselves up long-term is really the question. Whether or not that happens with the Big 12 ultimately, anybody's guess and seems still more unlikely than likely, but they are at least going to be open to hearing that. Now, here's something interesting. It says, as many sources have stressed, it would be naive to believe Texas, Oklahoma, and the SEC only spent a couple of months putting their plan together. The Big 12 and the Pac-12 have an opportunity to make massively important decisions that redefine their conferences. These deals don't happen quickly. Patience is required as hard as that will be in the Big 12. So true. And I just, I cannot emphasize this enough. I've tried to do it already, but I'm glad to see others that are very trusted sources saying this because everybody wants a quick solution. Everybody really does. And I even understand what the point Ryan Hyatt made on this channel last week who covers Texas Tech that, hey, moves have to be made to counter the SEC fast before we let them just blast away on a rocket ship from the rest of the college football world. But this is not going to be quick. The Pac-12 has a lot of options to seek out. They can look at the Big Ten. They can look at the ACC. They have other options for some term, type of scheduling alliance, teams that they could poach, whatever it's going to be. It does not need to be them acting fast to link up with the Big 12. The only people who want something to happen quickly are Big 12 fans, like fans like you or I that are just worried about what's going to happen to their school, right? you're the one that wants some sense of security. Nobody likes uncertainty. And unfortunately, that's what Big 12 fans are going to have to deal with here. But you should also remember, and this is a fair point raised in the article, that that is also something that will make Texas and Oklahoma a bit uncertain as well and will drag out their future, okay? So if there's a silver lining in all of this, being super reactionary and making some kind of crazy quick move like this would actually benefit Texas and Oklahoma. If you want to make Texas and Oklahoma squirm as much as you can, if you want to milk as many dollars as you can out of them, waiting and plotting your best move over the long term is definitely the best case scenario here. It makes Oklahoma and Texas sweat out the financials of everything, the cease and desist, what's going to happen with any litigation with the Big 12, right? 
it gives it more time for all that to play out because if the conference splinters and breaks up all of a sudden Texas and Oklahoma, they, they win, they get to go to the sec. They broke up the conference and now they're not going to have to worry about the crazy exit fees if the conference doesn't exist. So at least take that as a silver lining, big 12 fans, while you're sitting here having to wait and squirm and think about what it is that's going to be the future of your team. And just to finally drive this point home with one more comment from the article, this is really back to the, hey, you're going to have to be patient part of this. It says there's at least some thinking among decision makers in the Pac-12 that they don't need to expand and could be better served trying to form a strategic alliance with the Big Ten and the ACC. Right. So the, the Pac-12, look, I don't blame them. I, I would do that, too. Like you're going to just start going down the list. You want to move up the list in terms of things that could add more value to your conference. The ACC, the Big Ten, they're definitely higher up than the Big 12. So you start there, you work your way back down. If it eventually gets down to the Big 12 and if something does make sense, great. If not, they'll do something else. So patience, Big 12 fans. Unfortunately, patience. I will say it's great news for those of us that uh, have a YouTube channel, host radio shows, podcasts because it'll be more content. The fodder is going to be here for a while. So, hey, come along for the ride. Click subscribe if you have not to the channel. Talking all things conference realignment here. I'm trying to give the Big 12 and the eight remaining schools a voice here on this channel. Like the video, comment. It helps me out a ton. It gives you an opinion and a voice, and you may be featured in a future video. So please continue to do so. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.